Cool Day. Does milk cool your tongue after spicy foods? Oh, my God. That's hot. That's <laughs> still burning. That is hot. All right, great, great. Does double dipping spread germs? It's nasty. We're busting popular health myths. Plus, who handles pain better, men or women? I have brain freeze in my arm. Whoa, that hurts. And the beauty treatment that will make your skin crawl. Oh, get off, get off. <laughs> Coming up next. We'll save lives today. You guys ready to get healthy? Yeah! Merriam-Webster Dictionary describes the word myth as an idea or story that is believed by many people, but that is not true. So today, find out which common sense health rules are nothing but massive myths. Lies you've been told your whole life. And we're putting those health rules to the test with outrageous experiments that you have to see to believe. So on today's show, here's some of the things I'm really excited to uncover. First off, does double dipping your chips really add lots of germs? An age old question. Does wearing black clothes to look skinny actually make you fat? A shocking proposition. And just in time for Halloween, can blood-sucking leeches actually make you more beautiful? We'll have them on the show today. Let's get started with the health rules you can break tonight. YouTube star Nick Juhas is here. Now, he broke, broke the internet with his mind-blowing experiment about why Doritos are flammable. If you look at this image here, you can you know, save on charcoal bricks with this thing. But they really are flammable, unbelievably. Everyone's talking about this thing. It absolutely exploded all over the web. And Nick, you are busting science rules all the time on these videos. What gets you into this craziness? Well, I love science. So anything that has to do with science, we like to take that and then just make it massive. And when we can share that, that's, that's what we like to do. All right, so here's the deal. The first health rule we're gonna tackle is a dangerous one. It's the question about whether you should drink milk to cool your tongue after spicy foods. Let's scurry up here, because Sharon has bravely volunteered to be part of our experiment. She's wearing... Is that a tiara? You are very brave to come up here. Thank you. To do something that I would not be willing to do. <laughs> and you, Nick has brought you a little gift, Nick. That I have. So we have spicy hot peppers here. We mm -hmm. have jalapenos and habaneros. Thank you. <laughs> so, Sharon, how are you with hot things, spicy things? Um, a little iffy. Um, I can handle a little bit of spice, but I'm never just biting into peppers. Until today. Right. Until today. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna ask you to do this. I want you to bite into one of those peppers, not yet. And then we're gonna give you several options to deal with the pain you'll probably be sensing at that moment. Okay. Right? So audience, <laughs> it's up to you to pick which of these cures, commonly used cures, will work the best. Nick, please walk us through the options. Absolutely, so it's gonna get pretty intense. So this is beer, but it's actually to wash down the spiciness, okay. not, you know, to take the edge off. Or forget the pain. Right. <laughs> you drink we it off. <laughs> we have milk, because that's, you know, people think that spicy foods, milk, that's a good way of getting rid of it. Mm -hmm. Oranges, water, and bread. Hmm. Gotcha. Audience, shout out, what do you guys think? Bread. 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 I, heard, I heard milks, I heard some breads, I heard some, a lot of beers over there. You know what? <laughs> We're gonna give you the milk. Okay. You get, I'm gonna take the beer. Not fair. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take And the we're going to see. Jealous. So are we ready for the challenge? All right. Nick has a bailout just in case. So go ahead. You know what? I'll join you. Because oh, you're such you. a sport. So pass, pass me one that looks less hot than the others. Pick one you like. I'll are go, you ready? I'll go with the habanero. All right. I'm going to toast you. All right. Cheers. Are you ready? Yeah. Bite. Oh, my God. Oh. That's hot. <laughs> that is hot. All right. Definitely. Great, great. Right. Mm. I go. Oh, <laughs> so you're cheating, Dr. Oz. It's already right there. It still hadn't worked. It's still burning. So, Nick, help. Okay. What? Okay. What are we going to do, guys? Which one? Which one should we give him? I can't hear. I can't. They say. I still feel the burn. I definitely still I heard feel them the say bread clearly okay. in my I, I ear. I heard bread. Wait, wait, one more time. Which, which one was it? That's enough. Okay. Bread? Oh, bread? Can we bread? Okay, let's okay do bread. thank you. <laughs> Oh, he's already got it. He's already got it. He developed a hearing part. impediment halfway through the show. I could hear they were yelling bread. It wasn't on purpose. Sherry, that helped you, Sharon? Um, yeah, that helped more than the milk did. The milk felt like it did nothing. 
All right, so here's the deal. Mm. We're gonna show you something that's gonna change the way you think about spicy food. Come on now. Do a little experiment, Sharon. Okay. Mick's gonna do for us to explain why that bread actually helped, because I can taste my tongue again. Almost. So we built you a tongue, everybody. This is your tongue. Mm. And when you take spicy foods, I'll start the game rolling here. Like we just happened to do to ourselves while Nick gets gowned up over there. Yes. What a prima yeah, donna. Get put first, it all, oh, you know, please. All God, so Nick, please. They spiced it up like this. So when you put spice <laughs> on your tongue, guess what happens? Especially if you put a lot like that thing I was eating, guess what happens? Your tongue catches on fire, literally. And it burns up. The spice, unfortunately, happens to turn on lots of things in the tongue, but getting rid of it doesn't seem to be so easy. So Nick, walk us through, for example, water. What happens right. there? Let's see what happens. All right, it's gonna go ahead and spray some water on here on our tongue. And what happens? What happens? Uh, well, Nothing. Not so much. It looks like the fire's coming back. Yeah, and the problem is the capsaicin, which is why our tongue was burning that chemical, it doesn't actually get washed away by the water. It hooks, hooks into the little nooks and crannies, so nothing happens. We all knew that. Oh, all right, so let's try bread, Nick. You bought us some bread, freshly baked. I did. You gotta be embarrassed to wear those gloves on national television. <laughs> I actually brought these from home. This is my home collection glove. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and break the bread. Oh, he's breaking bread. Oh. <laughs> Serving it to all. That's okay. right. And what happens when he puts it on there? Very quickly, the pain dissipates. And why? Yeah. Very good. Yeah. This is important. Very nice. The spicy foods, the capsaicin is soaked up by the bread like a sponge. It literally pulls it out of your tongue so it's not there to hurt you anymore. Sharon, this is a little gift for me to you. This is a piece of bread that I brought from Nick's home. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. Thank, Thank you very you so much. much. All right, next up. Nick takes us into the bathroom to reveal the next health rule that's meant to be broken. Everybody knows you're supposed to wash your hands with hot water because it kills more germs, obviously. Your mother, your father, even your sixth grade health teacher, Mrs. Schmollenberger, told you that. But were they right? As it turns out, the hot water that we use to wash our hands is only between 100 and 130 degrees Fahrenheit, and water needs to be over 212 degrees Fahrenheit to kill bacteria. And at this temperature, our skin would burn, leaving us with an even bigger problem on our hands. Really, it's the soap and friction that removes the unwanted bacteria. Fun fact for you, neither the Center for Disease Control or the World Health Organization actually specifies what temperature to wash your hands. Sorry, Ms. Schmollenberger. Yep, at 212 degrees, water boils. So to show you what would happen if I washed my hands with this water, I'm gonna go ahead and dunk my hand down into this. I'm just kidding, I'm gonna use my cameraman's hand. There we go. No, come on, it's okay. Okay, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm gonna use this steak to represent the skin on my hand. Pretty good piece of steak. What's most important when washing your hands is rubbing your hands together to cause friction for at least 20 seconds. About the same amount of time to sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to me. That is so well done. Thank you. You tell it perfectly, the craziness is ideal. It just means a lot. So tonight everybody, live on the wild side and skip the hot water when you wash your hands. Okay, the next health rule is a big one. We've all heard about this rule. It has to do with this little bowl here. We've got some fresh onion dip. Nick, you hungry? Yeah, you know, I am. I think I will actually yeah. have a chip or two here. So you have a chip. And it's so good. Oh, but you didn't get enough dip on it. So what do you do? Go ahead, Nick. Ooh, double dip. Double dip. Yeah, my favorite. It's, uh, let's off to our audience a little bit here. Mm. Oh, triple dip. I covered it triple dip. Yeah. These are really good. You guys want to We do some? it differently here in LA. You're not bothered by the double dipping? No. You're okay? Anyone bothered, a little bit bothered? Who's bothered by the double dipping? Oh. What's the problem with double dipping? It's nasty. It's nasty? Yeah. yeah. And you had an issue? I have an issue as well. It's nasty, yeah. Yeah, just have a little bit though. It doesn't look bad, huh? Go for it. Go for yeah, I'm it. I'm not sure. We have intra-family strife here. <laughs> Germaphobe was all over the room here and all over the world. This rule is all over pop culture, because here's the deal. Remember that infamous Seinfeld scene? I do, yeah. Remember yeah. George Costanza, and he, he double dips, and what happens, they say, it's like putting your whole mouth right in the dip, and there's a presidential hopeful, and you follow politics. Oh yeah, absolutely. They're having discussions about double dipping. That's right. Yeah, I believe it's Donald Trump who has now coined that term. And what does he say? If you double dip, you are? 
Fired. Fired. <laughs> so the question is, is he right to do that? So Nick developed an experiment with our medical unit to test this out. I've been curious about it because I'm a notorious double dipper in our family. So you built a pretty strong case for it. All right, so what we did is we designed this experiment to test the germs that are in the dip. All right, so we have double dipped quite a bit. I'll do it again one more time. And Nick is gonna test the germ count in the dip, but go to the spot that I dipped. Be That's really right. harsh about this. So okay. I, I dipped here and I dipped here. All right. And I dipped there again. Gonna okay. swab it. So right where I dipped it, right there. So there's no cheating. Right over there, right there. Perfect, you got Perfect. it. All right, now if there's saliva in there, we're gonna identify it. Now, folks, while he's building this strong case from a direct experiment that you're witnessing live on the show, I'm gonna explain Another experiment we designed, a homemade experiment that's pretty cool. You know how you make those agar plates where you can grow bacteria on them? Doctors do it in their laboratory. Well, we did that. And what we found, here's here, there's a scientist. We swabbed the, the, uh, the French onion dip, and we wanted to see if there were germs on it. We put it on the agar with germs love growing on there. Then our staff, which loves to double dip like I do, they learn from the master. Look at them. Mm, saliva, <laughs> lips. All kinds of stuff being tr doubly transferred. Then we swabbed again, replated another auger plate, and I have those plates here today to show you what our findings are. Your mouth, if you actually did put your whole mouth like George Costanza was accused of doing, it would look like this. You see all the, the germs on top of this? You see that growing there? See, this, this stuff is not supposed to be there. Yeah, it's not supposed to look like this. See, look it's at supposed it. to be this yeah. like, nice see brown this? color. See this stuff? That looks like a mouse. Yeah, yeah, exactly, could be. There's a whole colony growing in there. Okay, now, before the double dip, we didn't have that, we had this, because it was clean stuff. I bought only the best for my staff. See that clean? Mm -hmm. This is just a little junk left over of the paint. There's no bacteria growing there. But the question is, after the double dip, what do we find? The exact same thing. They're the nothing. So it didn't grow on the agar, and then you now have the numbers. I do, so this is our germ counter. Our baseline was? So our baseline, would essentially be zero. And it actually was. We tested yep. it right before the show. It's a zero. I'll put a zero up there, guys. The germ count now is a whopping one. Which is nothing. Anything nothing. below 10 is it's safe. There's not enough germs in there to make any big difference. So you are welcome to double dip from now on. It's the holiday time. Don't waste time losing dips. You might want to keep that dip chilled in case any bacteria won't grow. Up next, the mysteries of the opposite sex revealed. Why you look at your husband very differently tonight. Later, you don't need Halloween to trick your family into eating a healthier treat. We're sneaking healthy ingredients into classic recipes. Trick their treat. And getting their reactions. Yeah. Trick over treats. <laughs> Coming up. 30 days, 30 ideas to fix your biggest body problems. Now this is a game changer. We test next level solutions in our fix or fail lab. See what works and what doesn't. Awesome, it is a fix. Lori Grenier from Shark Tank weighs in. Plus, exhausted? Gluten may be to blame. How to find out, all new Oz. That's coming up on Monday. Boston, the biggest health myths. It's time to set the record straight on the ones about men versus women. Because even after all these years, the other sex remains a mystery. So we're gonna demystify the differences between the sexes once and for all. And trust me, you'll be looking at your man or woman differently tonight. Nick Haas is back, along with scientist Sophie Bushwick, editor at Popular Science Magazine. So Sophie, you deal with these things all the time. What's the number one thing you're hearing about men versus women? I'm always hearing about how much easier it is for guys to lose weight. My sister's just complaining, you know, she works really hard to stay in shape. All her boyfriend has to do is start going to rugby practice once in a while and the pounds melt off. It's so unfair. It's not fair. Yeah. Who else believes in this? Who else thinks this is right? Here, I've got a, hey, are you guys together? Yeah. Oh, it's perfect. Now I can get an honest opinion. What do you think about that? It's hard because I don't know about the science, but cooking for three children, you know, I have to taste it and make sure it's safe to eat. So of course. that doesn't help. Yeah. And you lose weight pretty easily? I, I, I do. I can, I mean, she unfortunately can look at something sometimes and gain weight, and I can lose five pounds in a day. All right, so we're here in this, we're sort of reproduced. How many guys do you think that's true? Put your hands up. All the women and most of the men. All right, so it's Nick and Sophie, please take us away. We're gonna show us the truth about this statement. 
and Nick is going to get us started. You built two mannequins here, Nick, right? And yep, that's the right. fact on top of them? This is. And so we have a male here and a female over here. So this represents our diet. Okay. All right. Sophie, go ahead. Both of you guys are going to do it. You're both going to diet at the same time. Go yep, ahead, yep. Sophie. What are you All up right. to here? All right. So we are. As we're going, you can see that the fat is melting off, but... For one of us, it's going a little bit faster. Oh my God, look at that. Go oh, that's pack. so unfair. So unfair. Look how fast oh. Nick's losing weight. Uh, I don't even have to do much. It's got a so six so pack already. Going for a jog again and again every day and just like not having the same effect. All right, go uh, help her a little bit. Okay. Yeah, All I could right. use some help. Because I'll be your trainer here. All, All right. right, yeah, you're my personal trainer. Help me <laughs> melt right. the fat away. So the nice thing is that even though guys are definitely losing weight faster, and that's just science, if women persevere and you know, keep working at it, keep dieting, keep exercising, they can also meet their weight loss goals. Yeah, because if you notice, we're sort of about the same place now. The reality is, at the end of the day, men and women lose the same amount of weight. Men just lose it a little bit faster in the beginning. Women lose more at the end, but they'll finish the, the race at the same pace. We got the, the tortoise and the hare story. Nicely done, thanks for chipping in, Nick. Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, now we solved that. Nicely done, Sophie. Here's the question. Who handles pain better? Is it men or women? It's women, right? Because they have, they have children, they have to be able to bear pain. They have, so that's what I thought, but I decided to take matters into my own hand. I did a pain experiment in my own house with my family to find the answer. It's like a little science experiment. When I was in medical school, I was always taught that women, the fair sex, had a greater threshold for pain. You have to deliver babies and all those fun things, but there are recent studies that actually argue that we actually have the upper hand. Men have less pain. That's the upper hand? So we're gonna put our hands in the ice. You're gonna put it as deep as you can into the ice, mm -hmm. and we'll see how long you can hold it. Until oh. you lose your arm? There's many things could bad could happen, but all that matters is winning. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> whoa, that is cold. I have brain freeze in my arm. I, I can still move my hand. The numbness sets in and makes it more comfortable. Is it all the way in there? Is your foot, your hands have to touch the bottom. Airba, oh, airbo's out at 114. You're a winner in my book, sweetheart. Yeah, because I still have an arm. You don't have to do this. No, I have to be bummy. <laughs> <laughs> so competitive. Whoa, that hurts. Oh, please. Showing off. I can yeah. do two too. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want to say it. It seems oh, impressive. It's so terrible. Oh, the pain. <laughs> you guys are insane. <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, Olive, where's your pain? In which arm? I'm pulling yeah. out so we can. We can oh, yeah, we need. Oh, 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 the boys win. This just proves that women are smarter, oh. not that they can stand less pain. Oh, oh it feels nice to win. Oh, oh my goodness. Lisa always, I mean always, gets the final word. All right, Sophie, a lot of folks think that women have higher pain thresholds, but we just proved the opposite, and science says what? Science says it's actually men who have the higher pain threshold. Yeah, it's a surprise, but it's true. <laughs> There's a lot of different factors that go into this, but one of them is actually estrogen. So women have a menstrual cycle, and during that cycle, estrogen levels are higher or lower. And it turns out that when you've got more estrogen in your system, your pain tolerance is higher. And I think part of it is we're foolish enough as men to do things we shouldn't be doing. That's women a possibility. Women wisely, also possible. So Nick, little mental trick that I know that you've been hot on. Nick, by the way, is you know world-class skater. Rollerblader. Rollerblader. Professional stunt rollerblader. And I've broken many o bones. Right, so how do you deal with that pain? Okay, so here's a tip. It's a trick, really. So you visualize eating your favorite food, whether that be like a nice juicy steak or your grandma's nice gooey cookies. So there was a study done at the University of Wisconsin that said if you fantasize about eating your favorite food, this will help reduce the pain. Probably should have told you that before you. Yes, that would have been very helpful, Nick. Thanks for a little too little too late. I don't think it applies to visualizing ice cream, though. <laughs> we could do both. Listen, thank you very much. I know in my house we're going to have a rematch anyway. You guys should all do it on your own to prove it. Thanks, Nick. Absolutely. So we appreciate it very much. Up next, watch what happens when we put a new spin on Trick or Treat. <laughs> Later in the show, as the weather gets colder, women are warming up by wearing tights. So why are people freezing them? This is just something new. It's something cool. It's the latest fashion advice you need to hear about. And it works. Coming up. Mom used 
used to make mac and cheese, it was so good. And then sometimes, diabolically, she would hide veggies in them so you would eat them. Well, it never seemed to work, did it? Some uh. tricks never get old. Moms are always trying. And in the spirit of Halloween, I've got some crafty pranksters who are tricking their friends and family and eating healthy with unusual and clever treats. So good, you might want to make them tonight. Like all little kids, my kids have a sweet tooth. Well, tonight, I made a batch of chocolate chip cookies. The secret ingredient? White bean chocolate chip cookies! They're made with beans. Ah! Ew! They're made with beans? That's gross! Like B-E-A-N-S? Yes. Like beans? Yes. That's gross. <laughs> You like it? Yeah. So you carrots. What? Are you serious? I hate carrots. My friend Carla is a very picky eater with a sweet tooth. I've decided to make her pumpkin tofu cheesecake. Bean curd? <gasps> it's so good. I would have never thought it. You tricked me. talking about these white bean cookies that we started off with. Jeanette pried them away from her kids and brought some in for me. So how'd you decide to start making white bean cookies? I figured what better way to sneak fiber and protein into their diets? They're not gonna eat a bowl of beans. No, we're, we're gonna audit them in a second. I'm gonna okay. go talk to them. So show us how you make it. Okay, first you start out inside our mixer. We have brown sugar and butter. Okay. And you're gonna mix it till it's nice and smooth. There I go. There you go. Aha. Uh -huh. While he's doing that in a food processor, we're gonna take white beans mm -hmm. and some maple syrup, and we're gonna mix it together till it's nice. And, no, this oh, one is vanilla. Oh, sorry. The maple syrup, they already did it for us. So we're, we're gonna cheat a little. Let's take. I'll a, put that in there. Yeah, put the whole thing in. Make sure it's nice and smooth, because the minute they see any trace of a bean, they're not eating no. it. No, kids are, oh. They're not eating it. Okay, are you ready for the eggs? Oh, I love eggs. One egg at a time. One egg at a time. With one uh, hand at a time. Either, whatever you'd like. I, I put some extra calcium in there. There you go. Uh, now we're actually gonna put in the dry ingredients. And the truth is, it's like a regular chocolate chip cookie. Except for the beans. Except for the beans. All right, then you add your chocolate in there at the at very the end. end. chocolate okay. chips. All right, now here's the deal. It's all great, but people have to like the taste. Okay. So I've got a testing group here. This says double the fiber of a regular cookie, but if they don't like it, it doesn't matter. So please go ahead. <laughs> I need to know if you know if this is gonna trick or treat you. I don't frankly care how you go to the bathroom when you're done eating them. <laughs> and while you're testing them, I've got the kids over here. Have you forgiven your mom yet? Did yeah. you? She did? <laughs> you want one of these? You sure? It's a good sign. All right, Grandma, you have one too. Oh, you know, thank you know you. pass that around to everybody else behind you. Okay. I don't want them getting mad at the kids. Okay, we're ready for our voters. You've got your little cards. Can I see now? Up. Are you ready? Show me. Treat, 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 treat. Yay! Oh, five for five, and they're so discriminating. Did you like Yay! it? Oh, it's awesome. The best, isn't it? Now you see done. Now you see done. All right. Thank you. Now Crystal is here with her friend Carla. We saw the unfortunate reaction that Carla had. So, Crystal, what inspired you to make a tofu cheesecake? Well, I believe tofu is a universal ingredient, and you can mix it with anything. So I said, cheesecake's very fattening. Let me use tofu as a substitute. So you literally have the tofu. You add, is that cream cheese? Yeah, that's soy cream cheese, pumpkin puree, brown sugar, and this is uh, vanilla, nutmeg, pumpkin spice, All the good cinnamon. stuff. Yes. You mix it up there. Yes. And, and then you put it, you, you plate it out here, I guess, right? Yes. So this is the, this is the crust. It's... Uh, graham cracker crust, and you usually you put it in the food processor, you pulse it, and then you add some either soy margarine or regular margarine, and you have the most amazing cheesecake on the planet. Are you nervous about our testers? Kind of. I'm I hope very, they like tofu. I tell you, you've got tough competition here. I don't know if you have enough forks here. Oh, you have four. Oh, yes. they're already armed with forks and everything. Yes. All right. Now, I'm gonna point out, this has half the calories. Half the calories of regular cheesecake. It looks fantastic, it's easy to make. Is it? A tasty treat, or is it a trick that kids shouldn't be forced to eat? Mm, Are you okay? Really Don't finish yeah. the whole thing. Get your cards up here. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness, they're, they, they, they lost control of themselves. Oh treat, God. treat. This is treat. Isn't it good? Yes. It's good. Oh my God. It's very good. Thank you. But you're not voting. It is really, really good. 
<laughs> Nicely done, thank you. I'm so proud of you guys. Thank you very much. All right, find recipes and how to make these treats tonight. You go to DrOz.com, make them for your friends. And up next, why you need to freeze your tights. Find out how it can save you money. Later, it's the one fashion rule that every woman swears by. Meet the women who only wear black. I like to wear black on black with um, a little extra black. They say it makes them look thinner, but could it actually be making you fat? Coming up. All new Oz, 30 days, 30 ideas to fix your biggest body problems. Our fix or fail lab tests what works and what doesn't. Plus, is gluten leaving you wiped out? All new Oz. That's coming up on Monday. With the weather getting colder, women are warming up to wearing tights. And the women on my staff are obsessed, I mean obsessed, with the latest internet advice that you should freeze your tights. Style expert, in other words, known as the Curvista, Denise Caldwell, is here with the real scoop on this. Why are folks freezing their tights? You know what? This is such a game changer, especially for women that get runs in their stockings. You know, it's just like you want the bang for your buck. So yeah. especially if you're wearing nylon or pantyhose, you know, opaque tights as well, this really can help you out. I'm surprised we haven't heard about this before. Show us how it's done. Absolutely. Okay, so you take your stockings and you put them in the water. You just submerge them. So you're going to submerge them, get them wet, you know, and then you don't have to just make sure they're fully covered with the water. And then we're going to put them in the plastic. But you don't wring them out. You just leave you don't wring them out. You just basically want to make sure all the excess water is out of there, right. which is great. And then you're going to put it in the plastic. I actually like to make sure all the air is out of mine and then I'll fold mine in half, mm -hmm. get all that air out. So the, the tights are still damp. It's in the plastic. It's secure. Then we're gonna put it in the, in the freezer. So you put it in the freezer, stick it in there for a day, no longer than that. And then when you take them out the next day, they're frozen and you let them thaw out and then you wear them. You know, my mom used to get so mad, she'd buy these stockings and as she was putting them on the first time. It would run, Yeah. yes. So what do you do when you have to repair stockings? You know what, back in the day, and I would do it too, you use nail polish, which was great. You see, up. Oh, I hear yep. some yeps. You, you see that nick start and you say, where's my clear <laughs> nail polish? And then you polish it and do that. And you know, sometimes when I was in college, that happened, I was going for an interview. You get all the way to the interview, then you just have to take them off. This is just something new, it's something cool, and you get the little tingly feeling too from your tights after You get more than that for sure. <laughs> so is this really a game changer? It seems like everyone ought to be doing this. You know what, they've been putting it online, different people are trying it different ways. You know, as a stylist, I always try to know what's the quirky thing to do to help last longer. So I asked Shereem, because you know I just want to figure it out with, you know, with the yes. audience involved, to try this out. So she gave it a shot. So <laughs> Shereem, I want the honest opinion here. This seems almost too good to be true. Does it work to freeze your tights? I had a ball doing this, Dr. Roz. I'm an outfit seat person, so my, my tights are important to me. And I'm telling you, I didn't think it would work. But I still have them on now. I wore them for a few days, and it worked. Well, the stockings look beautiful. <laughs> All right, we're going to come back to these in a second. But listen, since tomorrow's Halloween and you're wearing stockings, I thought I'd give you a little sneak peek into my costume. What do you think about it? <laughs> Actually, that's not it at all. This is why I wear scrubs. I wear scrubs for this reason. What do you think? You like it? My version, I'm gonna put them in the freezer tonight. Up next, black is the number one color you wear this time of year, mostly to make you look thin. But is it making you put on the pounds too? Stay here. Later, people will do some crazy things for beauty. But when we saw this treatment, we got the chills. Would you try this to brighten your skin? I'm stuck here, my head. Yeah. Find out what happens when I put it to the test. Coming up. We are bringing healthy back this season. I want you to bring it too. Grab your prescription pad for fun and sign up for free tickets today. You can go to DrOz.com slash tickets and sign up. I love black clothes so much, I just decided to keep it super simple with my wardrobe. I like to wear black on black with um, a little extra black, just for a splash of color. I love wearing black because it makes me feel strong, confident, powerful, and it almost never goes out of style. I know most Jersey girls love wearing black and I agree that it makes us look 
thinner and everything. But for me, I like to wear it when I kind of want to go unnoticed. Worry Black, it's the one fashion rule that every woman that I know anyway swears by. Why? Because they say it makes them look thinner. Now listen, I know we ask the audience to always wear colorful clothes when you come to the show, and I appreciate you doing that, but I want to know what you have at home. How many of you have a closet full of black clothes? Yeah. A lot of them? Let's just talk a little bit about these black clothes. So why do you wear only black? Because it makes you look thinner. It works. It works. You think it works as well? I absolutely do. Does it change the way you behave when you wear clothes that have color in them? Sometimes. If I wear colorful clothes, then sometimes I'm brighter, happier, more talkative. And, but I have to wear black with bright clothes. Right. Is that how you all feel, that those who are wearing black? Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm getting a loud sense yes. Does anybody feel like they maybe eat a little bit more when they wear black? Yes, I do eat a lot more when I eat black. <laughs> it ain't a little, it's a lot. It's a lot, and why is that? Well, I feel like nobody can't see the tummy because the black covers a lot of it. <laughs> Thank you for being honest. All right, let's get to this. So it turns out that although you may think you look thin, it could be making you fat. The Curvinista is back, style expert Denise Caldwell. Here's the deal, we teamed up and did a little social experiment. We invited Jenna and Jacqueline to the show. Initially, they came. We told them they were coming for a simple fashion segment. And then we told them, well, Denise did anyway, a little white lie. We said we provide all the guests with an outfit to wear. And they were given a choice, a black outfit or a colored outfit. Take a look. Hey guys, so I know it's early, but we're gonna have an amazing fashion segment today. Are you guys excited? Very excited. Okay, I have some great gifts for you and I can't wait for you to try them on. It's gonna be fantastic. Ready? Yes. yes. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my gosh. This is really nice. Nice really dress. Nice. Yeah. It's very nice. <laughs> my. Yeah. Ooh, super nice. Cool. Yeah, right? Very Ooh. nice. Yeah. Pretty color. I nice. love the color. Right? Neither Denise nor I know what color they chose. Any guesses? I'm hoping it's color, but you never know. You guys want to find out? I'm curious. Jenna and Jacqueline, come on out. Reveal yourselves. Wow. <laughs> Jacqueline. Hi, how are you? Jenna, how are you? You guys are like twins. I know. I know. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> you both chose black pants. Why? Yeah. You know, they're incredibly slimming and they're forgiving and they're comfy. <laughs> they're comfy. They're my go-to pants. But you, always... but you picked a color at full top. Why is that? Um, just a pop. It makes, you know, brain your face. Looks good. I love Jules Holmes. <laughs> yes, well, sure. So here's the thing. That was only the first part of the experiment, having you pick clothes. There was a second part of the experiment. I don't know if you noticed it, but we have usually very healthy foods in our dressing rooms. But we put in your dressing room something a little extra special. The mm -hmm. other kinds of foods. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. All the cotton, the junk stuff that you might eat over Halloween. Did wearing those black pants make you feel like you eat more of that junk food? Yes. Thank Especially you. the top will make you feel like you can wear it a little <laughs> more at a one show here. Well, I'm just going to chime in here. I just want to say half the battle is done. They did a little bit of color. So bravo to you ladies. You look amazing. You. And you know what? You could still indulge. I'm just going to tell you. I love pizza. You know, I'm a curvy nista. But it doesn't matter if I'm wearing black or whatever I'm wearing. I love when I wear fabrics that will breathe, yeah. that will move with me, that can help suck me in just a little bit, contour and fit my body. Because you basically want to dress fashionable. Right. You don't have to have the fashion to fit your figure. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. Yes. yeah. The concern I'm going to voice to everybody, though, is when we wear the black outfits and think they're slimming to us, we think mm -hmm. we can get away with stuff. Because, see, I don't think it's so much that it's slimming. It sort of makes you feel invisible. Yeah. Right? It's like yeah. a crutch. You can actually hide in black pretty effectively. <laughs> and I want you guys to always pop. I want you to always. That's why we have the audience always wear colorful clothes. So yes. thank you very much for doing our social experiment. Thank you can you. finish those candy cores. Take them home with you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're the best, my dear. Thank you. The best you All right, up next. In the spirit of Halloween, I'm going to ask one brave audience member, just one, to dare something. It's a bone-chilling beauty experiment. See what we're talking about when we come back.
later. Fearful that Halloween treats will sabotage your diet? Then no guilt way to enjoy them. All new Oz, 30 days, 30 ideas to fix your biggest body problems. Our fix or fail lab tests what works and what doesn't. Plus, is gluten leaving you wiped out? All new Oz. That's coming up on Monday. But on a show of hands, who here would try leeches to brighten your skin and look younger? A lot of very excited people. A half person, a very excited person. Would you be willing to volunteer to come try this? Sure, sure. You, sh you sure? Absolutely. All let's right, try come it. On over okay, here. let's do it. Do you have any health problems? No, 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 no. All right, we'll, we'll figure this out. What's your name? Connie. Connie. All right, Connie. Have you ever played with leeches before? Uh, no way. No. All right. no. So while we're dishing them out of here and we're going to have them attach on us, all right, which is uh, actually they literally bite their way into you. No. I'm going right, to go back to my friend Terry in L.A. to get some answers on why the heck he tried this out with his wife. All right, so put Terry in a little box there. And I'm going to go hunting. Hey, Dr. Oz, you know we love leeches in medicine. In plastic surgery specifically, we use them when there's a process called venous congestion where you need to get blood out of a tissue so that the blood can flow in. But in plastic surgery for anti-aging, Heather and I have been using leeches to take the blood out of our abdomen, you place them on the abdomen, the leeches suck them out, and then once the growth factors in your blood mixes with leeches' saliva, the theory is that it forms a powerful rejuvenative solution that you can place on your face and causes increased cell turnover, Ouch. growth hormone and growth factor development on your skin, and overall rejuvenates your skin. I will tell you, that one of the downsides is for the next 24 hours where the leeches suck the blood out of, our, out of our cells because of an anticoagulant they inject, we bled continuously for 24 hours. Oh, and then it took about three to four months for those leech bites to heal. So oh, although it may be rather effective for rejuvenation of your skin, Heather and I really don't recommend it because who wants painful leech bites all over your abdomen? Oh my goodness. It stings a little bit. Do you feel it? Ah, yes, a little heat, a little heat. A little heat? Well, see how it attaches like that? Oh. Mm -hmm. That's the jaws. They actually, you know, it's supposed to be painless. I can sort of feel it, actually. Stings a little, as you said, right? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. So they, the leech has jaws, and these jaws have 100 sharp teeth right there, 100 sharp teeth biting into us. And then the saliva of the leech has substances that sort of anesthetize the wound area, but they also thin our blood there. That's why you keep bleeding for a while. Oh, great. You bleed a lot? No, not usually. <laughs> what do you think? You want to take this home with you? No, no, not at all. Get it off. Get it off. Well, I'll take about one second. I'm, 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 I'm stuck here. My hands are Get stuck. Get it off. <laughs> all right. So listen, you can catch Botched and Real Housewives of Orange County Monday nights on Bravo. And up next, you're going to keep that Halloween holiday from destroying your diet. I've got the no guilt way to have your candy and eat it too. Oh, my goodness. Get it off. <laughs> The search is on. We're looking for a nurse to join our core team of experts to provide wisdom, expert commentary, and advice. If you'd like to nominate yourself or a nurse who's made a difference in your life, go to DrOz.com and click on hashtag nurse search. All new Oz, 30 days, 30 ideas to fix your biggest body problems. Our fix or fail lab tests what works and what doesn't. Plus, is gluten leaving you wiped out? All new Oz. That's coming up on Monday. Can be a nightmare for those of you watching your weight. So I'm gonna take away some of the Halloween diet fear with a no guilt way to indulge in your favorite treats. Halloween candy is actually a tiny little blessing in disguise because the small itty bitty sizes make it easier to do portion control. So you have a treat without going overboard. But the key is to keep the portions to 100 calories. Who's good at picking out 100 calories? <laughs> All right, we're here. come on down. Are you guys related? Yeah, we're sisters. You're sisters? Oh, com competitive? <laughs> Uh, yes. Who's yes. older? I am. Oh, okay. You share candy? Uh, no. No, I didn't, I didn't think, no sisters do. All right, so what, what's your first name? Kelsey. Kelsey and? Lindsay. Okay, so Kelsey, I want you to show me 100 calories of these little bars over here. These are chocolate bars, right? They're little wafers on the inside. Go ahead. Um, I think 
About two looks like a hundred. Hmm. What do you guys, what do you think? Oh, I would say. Here, hold that for a second. Four. Four. Four, like this? Yeah. Sisters always disagree on the simplest things. <laughs> All right, so the actual amount is that. Oh, that, no. no that, that's, oh, go, 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 go down, all right? Two and a half of these things is still a reasonable amount. Break us around in, in half so it seems like it's more, right? That's still a much better trade than having just one of these or just one of these because these are each 100 calories also. Do so you have your choice? I prefer to go with the, the wafers because it gets a little more bang for the buck. Yeah. All right, that was a warm up round, all right? Yeah. Now you got these little fruity, chewy things here. Right? How many of those do you think it takes to get 100 calories? Put them on the plate? Yeah, good handful. How many do you think it's going to be? Let's see how frugal she is. <laughs> well, now that I know. Does she play with your things? <laughs> she takes everything. It's you. terrible, isn't it? <laughs> okay, that, that looks good. That looks pretty good. Well, it turns out that 25, which is about that and that, like that is about what you're allowed to have, which That's is very close. close. That close. That's very, very <laughs> close. Listen, there are lots of different chewy, fruity things you can get. These happen to be the best deal, I think, because you get 25 of them for the 100 calories. So I think actually you should be opting for that. now. All that said and done, although I do give you the, the opportunity to indulge over Halloween because it's worth it, this is the best trade-off. That is 100 calories. Oh, wow. Think about that. All that popcorn, 100 calories, just like 25 of these little chewy things and two and a half of these little wafer chocolate things. So Put I, these inside the popcorn. You know <laughs> do them both. Do them both. Are you guys dressing up for Halloween? Yeah. Yes. What are you going to be? I'm going to be Cruella DeVille. Cruella DeVille? Yeah. Um, I'm a little behind, but I'm thinking Ursula. Yeah. Disney fans. <laughs> yeah. Did you, did you like my outfit, my, my skeleton oh, yes. outfit? Yes. yes. I could borrow that, perhaps. You know what? I'll give it to you. It's yours after the show. <laughs> right. Just put it in the freezer. <laughs> Find all my best 100-calorie options on my treat sheet at sundoctoroz.com. Remember, healthy and happy starts at home. Woo!